better confess that. Let's go to the Gospel of St. John, chapter number 6. Somebody say, that's me right there. Broken and blessed. I'm blessed because I'm broken. <laughs> to our visitors, you'll we'll figure out what we're talking about here shortly. Amen. We're going to go to the Gospel of St. John, chapter number 6. We're going to start at verse 60. Verse 60. Gospel of St. John, chapter number 6. We're going to start at verse 60. We're still in our series entitled, Broken. When you have it, say amen. amen. And it reads, Therefore, when many of his disciples heard this, they said, This teaching is hard. Who can accept it? Amen. Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about, grumbling about this, asked them, did this offend you? Then what if you were to observe the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? The Spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh doesn't help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. But there are some among you who don't believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who did not believe and the one who would betray him. He said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the father granted to him. Unless it's granted to him by the father. From that moment, many of his disciples turned back and no longer accompanied him. So Jesus said to the 12, the original, you don't want to go away too, do you? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom will we go? For you have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and you know you are the Holy One of God. From verse 68, Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom we will go or to whom shall we go? I want to preach for a little while using that subject. I, know, I have no one else to depend on because I'm broken. You may be seated in the presence. See, when the world defines brokenness, it's a negative. Therefore, when you, when you admit that you're broken, the world would do like the woman with the issue of blood. They'll push you away, not because they feel you, you're unclean, but because you have nothing to offer. See, that's the world standard. The world love is conditional, right? I love you based on conditions, based on what you can do for me because the world is narcissistic. But when we enter the body of Christ, brokenness is something totally different than how we look at it in the world, even though the world's definition is true. I mean, to be broken means to be busted, disgusted, messed up, broke, no money, homeless, things of that nature. But when you come into the kingdom, brokenness is a good thing. In Psalms 51, we've been talking about David, how David was broken before the Lord. And that's the key. You need to be broken in God and nowhere else. Because if you're broken in anywhere else, it's a negative. But when you're broken in God, it's something to bring glory to him because it urges you to a place of humility. And Jesus said in his word, he who humbles himself shall what? Be exalted, right? And this exaltation is not something for God to raise you up over Christ. You're being exalted in Christ. That's another teaching, right? So when we look at brokenness, it, it, it really is a blessing. It does something to us. It, it, it does something to our mentality and how we think because defining biblically the word broken, it means to have a constant neediness for God. In other words, I need God. I constantly need him because I come to the revelation that apart from him, outside of him, I am nothing. I'm broken, right? I can't think right. I can't get right. How many people try to get right on their own? Can anybody who, who, who agree with that testify that it did not work? The reason why it did not work, because Pastor Al said some of y'all need to go check out King Discipleship, right? And start coming a little bit, but with just another teaching, right? He said no one is good. And the reason why you're broken apart from Christ, because nothing is good apart from Christ. This is why the goal was God and not good. If you notice, he said, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A lot of times we only use that in context of evil, but God wasn't asking us to know good either. Right? He only wanted us to know him. Right? Because he is the essence of good. He is the, the essence of perfection. He is the essence of what we know as morality. 
Right. So if we are to operate in any type of goodness, we must be in him. This is why John chapter 15, Jesus said, you can do nothing without me. You must be in me and I in you. Why is that? Because covenant, it represents an, a, a type of, a, of equal exchange, even though in salvation, we had no part of the exchange. We only had a part of the receiving, but it doesn't stop at receiving because this is our motto here. Believe, receive, then release. But what's wrong with a lot of Christians is we don't know how to release in the right posture. We'll begin to release in postures other than brokenness, which then calls us to exalt ourselves in deity, exalt ourselves with pride, exalt ourselves with education, exalt ourselves with giftings and callings and prophecy and all this stuff. When Paul it immediately said when he received the gospel that everything that made him who he was at Saul, it was done to him. In other words, it was like manure. You know what that word means. If you look it up in the Greek, that's what it means. Manure. It was done compared to the knowledge of knowing Christ. When you exalt Christ, everything that you was a part of is nothing because everything that was connected to you is broken just like you are. It's incomplete. It is not perfect. That's why nothing man can create can last forever. The essence of who we are in our true identity is in God. He is the environment. Nothing that has been ordained to be in an environment can thrive outside the environment. Birds can live in a cage, but it can never do what it's been fulfilled to do. You breathing does not signify life. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a praising him myself this morning. I'm going to say to you. You breathing does not signify life. What signifies life is Christ himself. And the Holy Spirit is the evidence that you're saved and he's in you. When the church gets to the point that it stops preaching like motivational speakers, we will understand the essence of the gospel. This is why Paul said, I know nothing but him and him crucified because it's through salvation that the gospel can hit and touch every aspect of your life. Woo. See, we think the gospel is only limited to this building, these four walls. But see, when we really understand the gospel, every day I wake up, I'm in the gospel because it's the power of God to salvation. Man, I'm in the Holy Ghost up in here. And salvation is not limited to Sundays and witness. Salvation is who I am. Salvation is what made me who I am because before he birthed me out of my mama's womb, Jesus was nailed to the cross. Woo, I'm about to get happy up in here. Hallelujah. See, see, I don't know about you, but see, I've had a confused week because my flesh want to look at it one way and my spirit want to look at it another way. But the more I read to God, I agree with my spirit. So this week was good. Why? Even though the trouble that was around me, the trouble made me look at something different than I looked at it before the trouble came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I, I told my brother here this morning that, that I wouldn't change a thing in my life because everything I went to negative produced something in me today. There's no power. There's no anointing without brokenness. How could you know you need a savior if you don't know you need to be saved? How could you reference God as a deliverer and you've never been able to, you never need to be delivered? Do I have some broken people in here who say, I know him as a deliverer, I know him as a savior, I know him as a provider, I know him as a keeper. I know him because I've been in positions all my life that need hell to done. I needed God to show up on my behalf because I didn't know what to do. If I just had five people who can praise God with me because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I tell you where I be in a crazy house or in jail. But because he had his hands on you, because because he had peace flowing through your mind, you was able to recover. The devil wanted to take you out. The devil wanted to kill you. The devil wanted you to be depressed. But Jesus said, "You are my child, and I got you covered." See, when you get to the place of your you're acknowledging your neediness for God, then God can show up. See, he resists the proud. He embraces the humble because humility is, is totally dependent on him. Humility is acknowledging that it's him, not me. My education didn't do it. My lack of education didn't do it. Even when I wanted to quit and give up. Anybody can testify that? You see, y'all act like y'all never wanted to quit. People act like they never wanted to give up, but if I could just be real, I wanted to quit yesterday, right? My flesh wanted to tap out all the time, but because of my spirit man being connected with the God that's in me, I still find myself here even when I don't want to. Be. You can't be consistent without brokenness. You can't serve without brokenness. You can't until you realize Christ is all you have. Yes. 
don't understand the essence of the gospel. Write this down. Christ can't become enough until he has become all you have. Ooh, let me rewind. Christ can't become enough until you realize he's all you have. This is why we preach Christ. Because he's all, see, you know why I preach about him all the time? Because he's all I have. Because even what I have is nothing apart from him. Y'all ain't getting this. Y'all don't understand this teaching. This is a little bit too deep for some of y'all. So we finna break. Everything I have is nothing apart from him. Yes, yes, yes. Everything I accomplish is nothing compared to him. Jesus. <laughs> it's nothing, Paul called it manure. Yeah. All the accolades. They're good. It's good to go to school. I was saying it's about seminary. I, 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 it's good to go to seminary, but if you're not going to seminary to learn more about Christ, you, you're going for the wrong reason. A lot of people go for the titles and the prestige and to put them in arenas, but see, he who exalts himself shall be abased. Right? Right? Sometimes we need to take a little seat on the passenger side. He who is led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So why are we trying to move and do and, and, and make stuff happen? We can't do it. It's impossible to make yourself good. It's impossible to do right. It's impossible to do the good thing. That's why salvation is apart from your works. <laughs> it's apart from your works because you don't have the right works. <laughs> to, 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 to be able to live up to the standard that it takes to save. <laughs> right? The lamb had to be a virgin. Right? Without spot or without blemish. You and I can't be the lamb. Nor can we be the line of Judah. We just got to be sons and, and sit and chill in him. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's where your peace resides. Right, let's get in this, man, because I'm, I'm ready to, I'm ready to, to, to do some. All right, Let, let's, let's go up to John 6 and 22. We're not going to finish this today. It's amazing, man. I can't depend on anybody because I'm broken. In other words, no one can fix my broken. See, a lot of times we'll be like the woman at the well. We're going to try everything. You see, 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 a lot of people don't understand when you don't get brokenness, you'll find yourself trying to seek other alternatives yes. in order for fulfillment to happen in your life. Mm -hmm. That's why some of us seek, seek alcohol and, 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 and it always begins subtle. It's the small foxes that destroys the vine. It always, uh, I, I, no alcoholic I ever met said they started drinking a gallon of alcohol a day. It starts subtle. You know, you just want to sip on a little something to just ease your mind because it's been such a bad day. When the, the gospel don't tell us to do that, right? The gospel says if it's been a bad day, you need to go into the scriptures and you need to pray the scriptures. A man should pray and, and, and not faint, you know. In other words, a man should always pray and not faint but we've been learned we've, we've learned to get a glass of wine to wind down okay it's all right if that's what you want to do but you don't do that to wind down what we do we pray we get in the spirit right we align ourselves with the truth because if you're looking for wine to fulfill what the Holy Ghost have been called to fulfill every time you go through some type of negative emotion you're gonna get a glass of wine now we add that up how many emotions that you go through a day that's negative all of a sudden you start with one glass and now all of a sudden you got 50 glasses and now you're making a bad you're still making bad decisions because now you're not in your right mind and now the alcohol is fulfilling so now you're gonna go snout a little something because because eventually your body come immune to a lot of stuff and, and if you're looking for peace and things it's never going to be enough this is why people overdo things because your emotions are overdue they, they, you, it's just all the time it's ups and downs things are happening if, if you're looking to drugs or alcohol every time something happened negative you're going to be strong out when the Bible says drink your wine with a merry heart if your heart ain't merry you don't need to be drinking a wine oh. <laughs> 
My children get on my nerves drinking some wine. Nah, that ain't what it said, do. You don't drink wine because your children get on your nerves. That's how you become an alcoholic. But Jesus turned water to wine. At a wedding, they were married. They were happy. It was a celebration going on. That's what people did in that culture. When they celebrated, you don't see people drinking wine to cope with life. <laughs> you don't cope with stuff. Nothing you've been called to have dominion over can fulfill you. Wine is not the environment. God is. When God got ready to put the, the fowls in the air, he spoke to the sky. When he got ready to put the fish in the water and put the beast in the field, he spoke to the earth. When he got ready to make man, he spoke to himself. Let us make man. Before he put the birds in the air, he spoke to the sky because the sky, the sky, the sky is where the birds are supposed to thrive. So before he got ready to create you and I, he spoke to himself because it's in God where we've been called to thrive. Not wine. Not weed. But I got liberty not to do it unless it's with a merry heart. That's what the Bible. See, the word excluded all your other emotions that make you want to go to things. If your heart ain't married, you shouldn't be drinking. So, I mean, we're celebrating. We're celebrating. It's an occasion. Because at that moment, it's moderation. But the church didn't mess up because the church don't understand biblically why things happen in culture and why people did what they did. So we try to define it based on our own marriage. And that shows us we're not broken before God. The Pharisees weren't broken before God, so they took the law and they wrote commentary to the law and they began to teach the commentary, not the law. So Jesus had to come back and tell what the law meant. That's just like me getting a TDJ's books and now I'm not teaching out the Bible, I'm teaching out a TDJ's book. It's going to be error. I respect the man. I love the man. I respect his ministry. But at the end of the day, he's a man. I'm teaching from perfection, not imperfection. Man, let's get in this thing, man. Let's get in this thing. The next day, the crowd, I'm on verse 22. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there has only been one boat. They saw that Jesus had not boarded the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone off alone. Some boats from Tib Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread that the Lord had given thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, truly you are looking for me. Watch this. Not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Don't work for the food that perishes, but for the food that lasts for eternal life, which the Son of Man would give you because God the Father has set the seal of approval for him. They was looking for the food. They weren't looking for the right miracle. See, they wanted the miracle that gave them physical substance and not looking for the miracle that gave them eternal life, spiritual substance. And this is the error in the church sometimes. Right, right. We're looking at the wrong miracle. People right. want to see a leg grow, yeah. but they don't want salvation. Right. Right. Now, I want to we want the hand, but not the heart. Right? Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And this is where we fall off track when it comes to accountability. Because you can't be accountable to no man unless you're accountable to God. Right. The lack of accountability that's in churches sometimes only shows the lack of accountability to God. If you can't be accountable to God first, you can't be accountable to me. Right. This is why I no longer get mad in leadership when people are not accountable because there's no bearing on me. It's no bearing on God. Because I understood myself as a young minister. I stayed at my pastor's feet. Why? Because that was my assignment. In regards if I got mad at him or not, I'm not getting off my assignment because emotions change. I may be mad today, but because I'm keen, I'm not going to be mad tomorrow because I don't let my, 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 my anger, my wrath go down, the sun go down on my wrath. Amen. I got to go to my brother and I got to resolve, but the church don't want to talk about that. The church lacks accountability in this age. We got information. We got revelation, but no accountability because information and revelation without brokenness ain't going to take you nowhere. It takes brokenness in order to make the information become one with you to be able to demonstrate that information. Information and knowledge without brokenness ain't going equa to equate to demonstration. Brokenness puts you in a place where I need you. So watch this. That urges you to obedience because you're always looking to God for answers. Right? 
But it's just like they, they, they wanted the food and not the food. They wanted to eat from the flesh and not eat from the spirit. That's how we do. We'll come to quote unquote church to get fleshly, fleshly, fleshly. But when it's time to get in the word, we sleep, sleep, sleep. It's like night quill, right? When, before I became a little more mature, I, I go to sleep every time I open up the phone. But I didn't go to sleep when I'm on social media. But now I find myself at night, I, if I get into something, I'm up at 12 o'clock because I'm talking about the revelation and God dealing with me. What's the difference? Now I'm more mature. How am I more mature? Because I realize I can't be mature without him broken. He said, I can't, you can't do nothing without me. Get it, church? Nothing. Somebody say nothing. 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 But hold on now, Pastor. There's a lot of stuff I do on my own. No, you don't. Even unbelievers not even doing it on their own. Colossians 1 say he's holding all things or everything or held together by him. <laughs> not your education not your knowledge not your understanding none of that is holding you together right even at even 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 at bad states in your life is him that's keeping you everybody in here can relive moments in their life where they like to lost their mind and you don't even have a clue how you came out of that you couldn't even afford therapy to go to therapy who am I talking to in here when nobody answered the phone for you. As a matter of fact, those who you thought was close really was your enemies and they revealed themselves. And you found yourself broken and hurting and then you, you don't even read God touched you and you couldn't feel it because it's not a feeling, it's faith. Some of us were sick and God healed us and we didn't even know it. This is why I don't get, see that's not the kind of healing of God. If you notice the problem in this vein, if you notice the posture of Jesus, Jesus would do something and say, don't go tell nobody. God is using people to heal every day. There ain't nothing wrong with the church. It's miracles happening every day. The issue is discernment has left. People don't recognize. For you to be able to wake up in the morning and get and, and be in your right frame of mind and even get up and come to Sunday service shows that the hand of God is on your life. Because if you compare what's going on around you based to what's going on in you, in the flesh, it doesn't match. But in the spirit, all it took is one time, one salvation, one baptism, and the rest of eternity was made fit for you who is not clean I am nothing you are nothing let me give you a scripture Paul said the one who planted the one who waters nothing but it's the one who gives increase being nothing is good see we're changing the narrative being broken is good being nothing is good being nobody is good being insignificant is good and some of you have been crying because you're insignificant some of you have been crying because people have not been receiving you some of you have been crying and want to fit in but see it's a blessing to be authentic it's a blessing not to see see hallelujah broad is the way to destruction narrow is the way to everlasting life you don't follow the crowd we follow Christ who am I talking to in this place? I feel a, I feel a boldness in this church that if some people not going to hide or not going to sit back and put their lamp on the lamp stand, but some people in here want God to be glorified and God to be seen. And if that's take me stepping out of my comfort zone in order for God to be exalted, that's what I'm going to do. But confidence outside of brokenness, pride, not confidence. But confidence, when you realize I'm nobody, that everything that God is doing, he's doing it through me. Oh, you look good today, Pastor. It's because he make me look good. It ain't because of my hair cut. It ain't because of nothing. It ain't got nothing to do with that. I got gray hair everywhere. I don't think I look that good. But see, when you see the glory coming out of my life, it's him, not me. It's him, not me. Pastor, your business doing good. It's him, not me. Because just a few months ago, I didn't know what I was going to do. I thought I was going to file bankruptcy. I, I, money all over my head. I'm in the negative. I owe this person. I owe that person. But you're looking good, Pastor, because he's doing it. Didn't feel good. Emotionally a wreck. But I didn't see it because of the glory. See, when you allow your light to shine, guess what? People just going to see the light. That's it. That's it. See, a testimony, if it had not been, that testimony but God. See, we say it, but you really do you really know what it means? See, when you say but God, that means it wasn't nothing else. See, until you come to the end of your rope, you're not going to really experience God. Until you come to the end of yourself, 
you're really not going to experience what it takes to evangelize. See, this was the power of Peter. Peter had rejected Christ. Peter denied Christ. Peter cussed and said, no, I don't belong to him. That's the worst sin that you can ever commit. But when Peter went back, Jesus met him back where the first place he met him at. He said, if you love me, go feed my sheep. Because Jesus ain't looking at the outer appearance. Jesus ain't looking at your money. Jesus ain't looking at what you got physically. Jesus looking at the heart. Can I use you? Can I use you and you not exalt yourself? Can I use you and you don't look down on people? Can I use you and you love the unlovable? Can I use you and you demonstrate the gospel and not yourself? Can I raise you up and put money in your bank account and you not be selfish with it? Will you help those? Will you go to the jails? Will you go to the prison? Will you feed the homeless? Will you help the widows? That's what God want to know. But until you get to a place where you broken, you can't do it. Brokenness, watch this, write this down. Brokenness eliminates selfishness. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, write this down. Brokenness ushers you to humility. Write this down. Brokenness calls you to draw men. So you think that being strong makes you draw people. No, no, uh-uh. Uh, being broken because everybody else broke it. And they can look at you being broken and say, man, I can do it too. Show me how to do it too. But see, when you ain't broken and you got it together, people last a little while, but they start finding out when they keep making mistakes, like, I can't, I can't reach that. I can't, I can't, I can't reach. I'm trying to get that, Pastor, but guess what? Pastor ain't that neither. Christ is there. I'm in him. See, that's what, that's what y'all miss. Christ is there. I'm just in him. He, he the one showed up today. Hallelujah. Quit looking at me. He's talking to you right now. He said, come on, my child. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Come on, my child. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come on, my child. Everything that you've been dealing with, everything you've been destroying, I'm talking about your sin right now. Everything you've been doing secretly, I see you, but I'm not condemning you. I want you to be better. I want you to grow. I need you to be broken before me, says the Lord. I need you to bow before me, but you can't bow before me unless you broken before me. You can't die to yourself until you realize yourself is nothing. You don't want to die to something that's something. You don't want to kill something that has value. Come on, man. The the only way you get rid of something is when you see it don't have value. So when you say I'm broken, you devalue yourself. But people that teach you, you want you 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 want to you want to put value on yourself. You want you want self-esteem. There's no self-esteem until you realize you're broken. I don't want self-esteem. I want God esteem. There's gonna be moments in my life where I can't encourage myself. Look what David said. David didn't say I encourage myself. Yes, he did, Pastor. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, yeah. In the Lord. In the Lord. Yeah. See, see, y'all missed it. <laughs> David encouraged himself, or he did. But he in the Lord. Uh -huh. If he encouraged himself not in the Lord, he wouldn't have been so encouraging. Right. Oh, y'all missing this here. Because when David was looking at himself, he would say, Lord, don't take your spirit away from me. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, help me. Because he's looking at himself. But when he began to encourage himself, he encouraged himself in the loop. See that right there? Somebody say, I'm broken. I'm broken. And I'm free. And I'm free. I'm liberated. I'm liberated. Because I'm broken. Because I'm broken. Come on. Watch this. I'm going to say this. Sorry, I closed you. Say this right here. And we finna go. See? God bless you. I'm so glad you're back. I was talking about you last week. Watch this. What can we do to perform the works of God there? Jesus replied, this is the work of God. That you believe in the one who is sent. What sign then are you going to do? Look that. Come on, man. Look, look, look. They just keep coming and coming. And coming. So what sign are you going to do? What, what? Hey, Jesus. What do you say? They ask, what are you going to perform? Our ancestors. See, that's that ancestor stuff. Yeah. Ate the manna in the wilderness just as it's written. He, it's just as it's written. He have given bread from heaven to eat. Now, now see, see, they, they, they missed, they, they partially yeah, interpreted yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. They thought the bread, what they were just talking about, that was a shadow when, when the Israelite ate manna from heaven. But G Jesus finna correct their doctrine. Watch this. Watch this. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, Moses didn't give you bread from him. But yes, he did. Mm -mm. But my father gives you true bread from heaven. Come on now. 
Pause. But pastor cast out them demons today. Pastor preached a good sermon today. Girl, pastor prophesied something and it came to pass. No, no, baby. God was doing many works through the hands of Paul. That's what I say. That's right. God was doing so many miraculous works through Peter that even by his shadow, people were getting delivered. God, God used Pastor. God used Al. God used Vito. They're broken. I'm broken. So anytime you see me using or being you, it's God, not me. Look how they did. But Moses, now Moses ain't do nothing. As a matter of fact, Moses was broke, just as broken as the people he would leave because he was tired of them. And why God said, okay, you didn't hit the rock. It's, a, it's over. I got to take you on home. You and all the, the older people. Come on. The whole generation ain't entering the problem. It wasn't no punishment. The folk were tired. They were wore out. Look what Moses went through. Everybody think God turned their back on Moses. That case, he wouldn't be in the Bible. The, the Bible wouldn't tell us to look to him. We have such a cloud of witnesses. <laughs> He's part of the clouds of witnesses. God did Moses a favor. Because look what Joshua went through with them. In the, they ain't nothing changed. <laughs> this generation would change because they didn't have the Holy Ghost. Y'all need to get this. Come on, we're finna go home. I got, I got to give this, though. I got to give this. All right. The bread of God is from the one who came down from heaven to give light to the world. Then they said, sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said, well, okay. I'm the bread of life. Yeah. Jesus told them, no one comes to me will ever be hungry. But, but, but there are Christians that's hungry. That ain't talking about that kind of hunger. You're fulfilled. Right? And no one who believes in me we ever thirst again, but as I told you, you've seen me, and yet you do not believe. Everyone the Father's given me will come to me, and the one who comes to me will never be cast out. So you're securing your salvation, ladies and gentlemen. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of one who sent me. This is the will of the one who sent me, that I should lose none of those who have given me, but will raise them up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father. Everyone who sees the Son and believes in him will have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. Talk about in the end. So you see, a lot of us shouting to be raised up now, but I got some news for you. Okay. If, that's your, if that's your attitude, you're going you gonna, to you gonna, you gonna get weary. See, a lot of us get weary because we got the wrong interpretation of Scripture. Amen. But see, God is raising up a people who... Oh, there goes some persecution, baby. You read it? Hold on. Because it's we, we, we for God for to get glory out of it. Right? <laughs> Therefore, the Jews started grumbling about him because he said, I am the bread of life. Came down. See, they always busting up some stuff. Or trying to. They were saying, isn't this the Jesus son of Judge Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can we now say I have come down from him? Carnal. Jesus answered, stop grumbling on yourself. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw them. I will raise him up. Look how Jesus keeps saying the same thing. Oh, y'all ain't getting it. They ain't getting it. It is written in the prophets, and they will be taught by God. He's God. He's teaching you. He's trying to show them. That was a prophetic word. They'd be taught by God, but see, they looking at him as man. Look, we know him from Nazareth, Carpenter's son. They don't know. No, they even trying to reason with Jesus based on his flesh. Oh, it's so much meaning in this, but we're finna stay on track. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He's talking about himself. He has seen the Father. Tru I, truly, I tell you, anyone who believes in me has eternal life. Look at that. Now, we're gonna go home off this. Because we, 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 we look at that. Look at that. He said, truly I tell you, anyone who believes has eternal life. Anyone who believes has eternal life. So this belief is important. But this belief is not in the belief like we be 
understand and believe. Belief in the sense that when Jesus said this statement, it means to trust in. Look, look, at, your, look, at, your, look at your Greek. Rely on. And cling to. That's belief. See, belief is not a noun. It's a verb. See, if belief is a noun, we got a problem. Because it don't demonstrate nothing. Come on now. That's right. Belief is an action. Come on, baby. That's right. Belief causes something. Trust. Rely on and cling to. Right? This brings light to John 17. When Jesus prayed to the Father and said, this is eternal life. That they would know you. And know the one who sent this word. No, it's not informational. It's relational. See? It's connection. You can't have relationship without connection. It's being connected to God. And they misinterpret it. Believe means to rely. I'm relying on. See, we think believe is just, I'm going to believe and I'm going to watch. No, I'm constantly relying on Christ. See, the day we stop looking to other stuff for answers, I say this all the time, and I've learned this in life. I can't, I can't learn like love Vita the way she's supposed to be loved unless I come broken before God. Unless I believe in him. I'm relying on him to constantly, see, there we go, show. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. I need him to love her through me. Because if you show me how, then, 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 then there's, there's going to be some error there every time. But if I'm in you and you in me, and his spirit is empowering me to love her, I'm looking at him. See, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. The Bible never told a woman to do that. That's a love that only Christ can do through you. Right? Lord, teach me how to be a good businessman. Okay, become broken. Oh, in business, yes. Because once I become broken in God, I begin to look at the people I lead different. Now it becomes a thing of now I'm looking at my business at the rest of the right purpose. The people that work for me are not there to make me money. That's the world says. The people that work for me are, are there for me to provide employment to them with the right atmosphere, with the right character, and with the right morality. That means I'm going to take care of my employees, not my employees take care of me. Because if I take care of my employees and I take care of, of my business and I steward it right and I market right, guess what? Them employees are going to go do superb jobs. That's going to build and it's going to make the company look good. Because I'm treating them fair. I'm giving them the fair pay. I'm not beating myself down with prices because I'm beginning to look at it at a different perspective. They have families to feed too. It causes me to pray to increase my business for better opportunities for my employees. Who am I helping in here? Because we come to church and we want favor. We want favor. I favor my business. And favor this. And if I sow, no, 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 but you're mean. Selfish. Make ten thousand dollars, you pay it out a thousand with ten people. People barely making it that's working for you. Who am I talking to? Inflation is going up, but your pay is the same. You're not asking Holy Spirit for different ways that we can balance the books in a way to be able to continue to run the company and pay. See, see, let me show you something. See, people, see, this is where the power of the Holy Spirit. I got an eighth grade education. I'm saying I'm gonna let y'all go and give y'all some wisdom. Inflation rolls up. It's easy to counter inflation. 
Let a certain percentage of stuff that you used to pay for go. So watch this. Gas went up. We don't drive as much. We shut the office down because we ain't finna be coming from home every day and back and forth with the office. So we made our office at home. Right? So we can balance inflation and I don't take away from the people. I would rather do without in order to sustain the same financial standard that I was giving my people and not have a Monday morning meeting where we're going to have to decrease pay, y'all. What position is that going to put them in? I'm using that as an example because a lot of times in the church, we won't increase without brokenness. We won't favor without character. We want to get in position without moral standards. Because we feel like that this is business, it's, it's, it's my personal life. It's, it, no, baby, the gospel impacts every aspect of our life. Amen? Amen. We won't increase, but we're not stewarding right. We're not giving. Don't touch that money. Well, I might need to, so you can stop touching it. You keep touching it. Stop touching it. Stop touching it. <laughs> Me and my wife, we live off a certain percentage because that's what God has given us. We got other things. But see, when you come broken before God and you realize, man, I, don't, I ain't nothing. I don't need nothing. I just need you. I just, I want you. <laughs> like, all this other stuff you got. <laughs> Lord, I just need you. <laughs> I need you. This, simple, this is a simple life. I'm telling you, I need you. I hear that. Look, <laughs> you have all that. Else, I need you. So when I get it, it don't matter. If I hit a twenty thousand dollar lick, I ain't got to shoot. We finna go buy. No, no, no. I'm finna, Lord, what you? Cause I need you. I'm fulfilling you. See, until Christ becomes enough, you can't be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Cause we'll receive Christ, but we want other stuff too. See, look what the scripture says: Seek ye first the kingdom. And, and there's so much revelation. I say, okay, seek ye first, cause there's other things we're gonna seek. No, seek ye first, and there's other things He's gonna add. You ain't gonna have to seek. He shall supply all my needs according to his riches of glory in Christ Jesus. Ooh, that's a shouting. See, y'all ain't shout right there. Because she won't want. See, we won't wants, but but into need superside wants, man. Your life ain't gonna change. Yeah? See, I want what I need, not what I want. Cause what you want gonna keep you in debt, credit cards. It's gonna make, see, see, but what you need. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbors. Neighbors. I got what I need. I got what I need. <laughs> That's your word. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. I got what I need. I'm in full supply. But Pastor, my, my financial, I'm, I, you got what you need. Amen. Amen. May not be in the bank, mm. but you got it. I got what I need. It's in a mansion. Yeah. <laughs> it's in a house. Yeah. You have, see, y'all, look at the revelation. How can you put a mansion in a house? I leave y'all with that. Let's stand on your feet. Let's pray. <laughs> we gonna pick up that name. How can you put a mansion in a house? In my father's house, yeah. there are many mansions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh?